here we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. We have two concentric, meaning they have the same center, cylindrical conductors. The inside one, which has a positive linear charge density lambda, the outside one, which has a negative linear charge density lambda, and let's say that it's the same charge density, one is positive, the other one is negative, and what's the potential difference between the two cylinders? How do we figure that out? Well, it turns out it's not as difficult as it may seem. We can almost ignore the second cylinder because any charge that's on, on the outside of the second cylinder will have an electric field that's only effective outside the cylinder and not inside the cylinder. So the charge on the second cylinder doesn't really affect what happens between the two cylinders. The inside cylinder would have a positive charge distributed on its surface. Again, since these are conductors, all the charge will be at the surface. And so what we can say is that the space between the two cylinders is only affected by the charge on the inner cylinder, not by the charge on the outer cylinder. Because of that, we can use the same principle. Again, the electric field outside the first cylinder will be equal to this, defined by the positive linear charge density of the inside cylinder, not affected by the outside cylinder. We also know that for a constant electric field, the relation between E and V is equal to this. We can say that the potential difference is equal to the, the uh, electric field strength times the distance traveled in parallel to the direction of the electric field. But since, of course, we're dealing with a non-uniform electric field outside the cylinder, we then have to take this equation right here and write it as follows, that dV is equal to the strength of the electric field, which is a function of the radius, times dr. And that's the way we're going to find the difference in potential between these two cylinders. That's what we're after. What's the delta V between the two cylinders? So we can then say that the change between the two cylinders, and let's say that the radius here for the outside cylinder is R2, the radius for the inside cylinder is R1, so we're going to go from the, the outer surface or the outer cylinder to the inner cylinder like that. We want to find the difference in potential there, and that is going to be equal to uh, the integral of all the dVs, and we're going to integrate from R2 to R1. So we're going to travel from the outer cylinder to the inner cylinder. We want to find out what that potential difference is. And since the potential difference will increase as we get closer to the positive charge, as R decreases, we're going to need a negative sign. So this is minus the integral of, instead of dV, we're going to write EDR from R2 to R1, and the electric field outside the cylinder is equal to this. So this can be written as minus the integral of the charge density of the inner cylinder divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times 1 over R dr going from R2 to R1. Now, of course, lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught is a constant, so this becomes uh, minus lambda. Oop, that's a, not a very good looking lambda. Let me try that again. Lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times integral from R2 to R1 of 1 over R times dr. And of course, we know what that integral is. That is the natural log of R. So we can say that this is equal to minus lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of R evaluated from R2 to R1 which is equal to minus lambda over 2 pi epsilon sub naught. You may say, why is he always writing that over and over and over again? That's one way to keep from making mistakes. You just keep writing and only making small changes one step at a time. So here we have the natural log of, when we plug in the upper limit, we get R1 minus the natural log when we plug in the lower limit, which is R2. But now I want to take care of this negative sign right here. So I'm going to take this, multiply it times this, move those around, and so this is equal to the positive lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of R2 minus the natural log of R1. So simply by flipping these around, I can get rid of the negative sign. And then using the rules of logarithm, we could then say that the change in potential or the difference in potential, it's probably better to say the difference in potential is equal to R from going from R2 to R1 is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of R2 divided by R1. And that would be the answer. That would be the potential difference between those two cylinders. Now, if R2 is greater than R1, which it is, R2 is bigger number than R1, then R2 divided by R1 is greater than 1, 
the natural log of a number greater than 1 is positive, so it's a positive change, meaning the potential will increase going from the outside cylinder towards the inside cylinder. And the difference will be equal and defined by that number. And that's how we do that.